Okay, I'm going to show how removing the fan motor on a GE 18 cubic foot um, refrigerator here. The fan itself is, the bearing itself is kind of loose. So what happens is it makes a lot of noise. Uh, the door got left open in this, so completely iced up. But I bought a new motor a couple years ago, never put it in. Just want to show how to put it in. Here's the name plate on here. And this one was built actually in I think 2011. It's a real high efficiency refrigerator. It's a 335 uh, kilowatt hours a year. Probably made in China. But bought a motor, decided not to put it in because it just kind of like once I defrosted this once, it kind of calmed down. But to take this off, you have to undo the ice maker. So you've got a Phillips head screw it's held on on either side. And then I pulled this aside. And then the cover on the back here, I've already got this off. But there's a piece of plastic here. It's the chute, and that's the part that kind of baffled me before. It's literally a piece of styrofoam that you've got to pull out. Uh, this is the air chute that goes into the lower unit. So you want to go in there and just kind of wiggle this around. It'll pull up vertically. So this will pull up vertically. You pull it out. I was kind of scared before, but you can see it's kind of taper-shaped. So... This sits down in here and prevents you from taking the back off. So, this adventure, I actually got that part out. And then I did the Phillips screw that was here in the corner, here, and the two that are on the motor. And then this whole piece will completely just come out of here like this. And there's the coil that's gotten kind of iced up because it's run too long because the fan is kind of goofy so got a new fan motor here that's going to go on this all drains down into a uh, um, pan so it's going to go down uh, below your refrigerator so it could overflow when you do this just be aware now there this is the water entrance it's for the ice maker and this is the plug that you undo on the ice maker the plug has actually got a couple little snaps here so I had to get behind this with a screwdriver pop this one and then this one and I went ahead and marked it but it looks like it's polarized so it's fairly obvious which way it goes on put a black mark here and a black mark here but it's got a tab on this side and I one you can can't really see I spread those both aside and so there's the ice maker unit it just hangs on by these two screws here so you can put the screws in to put this back on and just hang it down. Um, hangs on by gravity. The water fills into this little piece here. So here this is all completely iced up. Now when the thing is all on, if this actually gets to be kind of like clogged up, you're going to get ice in here, then your efficiency is going to drop down. So I've got the unit actually off so I can go in here and unplug this. And I'm going to go ahead and put a new fan motor on here. Okay, to get the motor off here, I've got a nut driver. It's an 8 millimeter. You can also use a 5 16 They're basically about the same size. Go in here between the blades. Undo this off. And I hope I'm doing this right. I haven't done this before. I could take the entire piece off here but I see the uh, thermostat and everything's behind there so I'm not going to try to press my luck. There's that screw. They have a different kind of head on it. There's no Phillips on this. There, I've got the whole piece on the side. Now I'm going to have to try to go ahead and get the 
uh, motor off here. I'll try to undo the shaft. So to make it easier, I went through and just going to undo the electrical connector here. It does have a little bit of a snap here. You can squeeze this, pull it right off. Now I got the assembly here. Looks like the bearing is shot in here. So wobble around was a new one won't. Vaporator fan motor. That's a WR60X0046. So this one's fairly tight. This one's got a lot of loose as a goose. Uh, the bearing is shot on it. Get the same connector. To get the fan off. Let me just pull off with my fingers here. It's got just a friction fit. Pull the motor off. You can see the play on here. Still running, but it's just getting to be where it's kind of flopping around in the wind. It makes a lot of noise. So you can see this is the one that's worn out. This is a new one. And again, this is about 11 years old. I left this bracket on because here's the uh, control for one of the valves here. I don't want to mess with this. So there you go. You can see the ice is melting going down into the uh, lower unit. There's a replacement motor. This says it was made in August of 2010. 14T. This has got a slightly different 141. There you go. It's got several different numbers on there. It's the same motor. Again, this bracket's going to go up back here like this. So what happened is the bearing just got kind of worn out. Started making a lot of noise. Still worked couple times when I left the door open earlier, I mean, a couple years ago, it would get to be where this would be hanged to the side and you got some ice. So I ended up turning it off, letting it defrost some, and then it would spin up. It's just kind of dancing around here. Fan was just kind of making a lot of noise here. You had to get a kind of a whirlwind to start. Okay, here's a new motor. I've gone through and put a date on it just for posterity. I'll probably put the date over here on the side where you can see it, but I tend to do that on stuff. So the back end goes into that rubber piece. The front goes into here. And the whole unit goes like back there in place. Okay, got the camera position, so hopefully I can get a view of this. Shaft sticks out, of course. So, I'm going to put this in here like this in the rubber, rubber grommet. Here it is coming apart. So the rubber grommet is like this motors in here to kind of keep it vibration resistant to isolation I'm excuse me and then this goes on here like this okay I've got the uh, new motor here in the bracket it's got a rubber piece in the front and I'm going to go through and have the uh, connector facing down. The screws on this have our 8 millimeter 5 16 hex. And I've got the, purposely I've got the fan blade off. So I'm going to put the uh, screw in here like this. And I've got to make sure i got the right nut driver. There's an 8 millimeter. I'm going to tilt this up. And those are self-tapping sheet metal screws. So 
So there's one that's in there. So this is all held in rubber like this. You can tell the screw that goes on there. There's no Phillips on there. It's got to be snug down in place. So the motor's all held in rubber like this and then you notice I screwed up I didn't put the ground wire on here. So I'm going to take that off. If you're in doubt any of this you can take pictures with your cell phone when you're taking stuff apart. I do that if I'm going to wait a while just so I know. This is just a grounding wire. all in place plug the connector in you can see it's color coded and that went in that was real easy the one that was for the ice maker was had a little bit of uh, uh, some locking stuff this one was actually just popped right in place This kind of doesn't matter where it is. If this actually touched over here like this, it might transmit some vibration over. So it probably needs to be sort of like that. And here's the fan blade on here. This particular one, it went in like this. So it just kind of just goes in by friction. And you can see this here, it's got hardly any play on there. Looking back I probably should have just been able to pull this off to get the bolts off but I didn't do that. So I'm going to wait a little while let this make sure all the water drains out. This is a spine flin unit which is actually GE Hallmark. It comes back to uh, GE Carrier. It goes back into the early 60s. They perfected that for outside air conditioners. There's the motor. Again here's the wobble on the old one works it just kind of was all making a bunch of whoop de doo noise got this in place got the ground wire down there's the water chute so the next is is to go ahead and put the cover on well I'm probably gonna put a fan in here for a while and just dry off make sure all the ice is gone if this is iced up it's gonna go ahead and drop the efficiency so I'm gonna put a fan in here and just dry all this out for a while Got the old patent fan running. This is old to a ground fault too, so I'm not worried about getting shocked or anything. I'm just kind of trying to accelerate uh, some of the ice that's clogged up in here. It, it, what appears what's happened is when this fan gets to be kind of wobbling around, I don't think the RPM is as high, so it doesn't tend to pull as much air through it. So you can see there's a lot of uh, water flowing through here because I'm melting some of the back ice. There's actually two sets of fins. There's a front fin and a back set of fins. So this is a double row. So you can have ice behind there that you can't see. So a lot of this is flowing out. Uh, that's from the back set of coils. That's a double wide coil there. There's the plug for the ice maker. This is the water entrance. And this is the, this is the uh, temperature control valves measuring the uh, temperature of the uh, evaporator valve here. This is where the phase change goes. You can see there's a capillary tube on here. So high pressure comes through here and it expands. So the phase change occurs right through here. The big line is the low pressure return. So I'm gonna let this fan run until we kind of get the bulk of the water out. Okay, we've got eight screws. Got some real long ones here. 
to hold the ice maker on. These that have a head like this went right here, which is a plastic piece that goes on at the very end. These with the Phillips went on right here. And these other ones went up here at the very top. So here's the cover piece that goes on. We're going to stick it through here. It's got the sucker upside down. It's got some foam on it. I don't know if the foam has come undone. No, the foam looks pretty good. This hole here it's got to go through this. And you got to get this by the connector right there. And let's see how this goes on here. Lifted that up to put that on. This looks kind of... You got one, two, three, four. So these small guys go on to here. I'm surprised they didn't use the same screws And all the places is kind of strange, but sometimes you do that in manufacturing. You want to try to eliminate the number size types of screws. And these are the short ones. We'll take the screwdriver here, see if we can start these on. I'm just going to slightly snug these down until we make sure it's all lined up. This is just the cover for the coil. Doesn't seem like it's starting that well. We're gonna back this off. See if we can get it to. Those are self tapping in plastic. They've probably never been taken off since it's been built. This one seems a little bit more screwy. I'd imagine if it's not just completely bottom out, it may vibrate. Now I just put this fan in arbitrarily. It can be pulled in and out. You hear it rubs. Push it in some. That's what was going on is that when this is loose here on this motor, it's going to go ahead and try to touch this edge. And when you get some ice buildup, it's going to make some noise. So this can be pushed in even further. Probably for airflow, you probably want to have it so it's the fan is close to that. Okay, we got the back on the unit there. 
This is the cover that goes in place that uh, is the air diverter and it covers up the fan. This is the place that when I took this off a couple years ago, it kind of threw me for a loop because I didn't know how that came out. And so that's something you probably don't want to force because it's just uh, styrofoam, but it's tapered and goes down in the hole here like this. That's just pressed in place. And it does have a part number on there. I don't know if this is replaceable or not. 197D6285P001. But they could get goofed up if you try to manhandle it. So that goes in place there. And the cover piece here. It's got some slots here that go into this piece. So because the way the slots are, you're going to have to lift it, looks like, up. Go toward the top. And there you go. The fan is behind that. So if you want to see if the fan is just goofed up, you undo these two screws. Lift this up. And you can see if it's got too much play. There's the new fan doesn't rub but what's going on here so put the air diverter on push it toward the top and drop it down so it's held in like that and then these particular screws had a head that looks like this You don't have to go nuts about uh, tightening these up. Now, when the door was open here earlier last night, I had something that had a bottle of water that was frozen and it knocked and opened the door open. This was all iced up. And all this was iced up. So you didn't have any airflow through the unit. You've got airflow. Here's the top part and the bottom part. This diverter piece is what brings air into the lower unit refrigerator. Now I'm going to hang the uh, ice maker on here. I'm going to find that screws somewhere over here. There they are. You can just go take these, put them in place. These are the longest screws it looks like. And let's just see if this will go in like this. There's the ice maker. It should just hang on here. And that tube goes into that little compartment. And I'm going to wipe some of the grudge out of here. When you got the ice maker out, you probably should go through here and clean all this out. It's a good time to clean it out. some of that. Take that out a little bit. It just sits here like this. So that's about it. I got the ice maker snug down here with the two little, these are the longest screws. There's where the water goes in. Of course this is the uh, on off. It's a stop when the bails up it controls the uh, electrical to the valve the valves in the back side of the unit here's the air diverter and you got two screws here that one took a little bit harder to get it to start now I'm gonna go ahead and kick the unit down and why you got the unit apart here is when you want to go through mm -hmm. kind of clean out the inside this has been a fairly clean refrigerator but you want to clean out some of the grub you got on here. Okay, we got the unit plugged in, all done. Got good airflow here coming out of the top. This is the suction area through here. Got pretty much the unit cleaned up. 
We've got a wide hour meter down here. I normally run. So you got 120 volts, 0.83 amps, 98 watts, 100 volt amp years. And there it is, zero kilowatt hours. This is a real efficient unit. So it's not making all the weird noises. This is probably gonna run have to run up probably an hour or two to go ahead and uh, pull down the full cool. Still got some tape from the uh, energy efficiency thing from ten years ago. This unit here, the bought this back when they had a big thing for uh, super high efficiency. It's a uh, only 335 kilowatt hours, which is really good. See, it's based on 2007. Built, I think I bought this in 2000, early 2011. So this is probably about 11 years old. And it's been, this hardly runs, takes any energy to run this thing. It's only 18 cubic foot, but it's perfect what I need it for. And let's see what it says up here. The information. This has got R134A, 4.62 ounces. This is an 18X CTRW. The WW probably means white. And Louisville, Kentucky. See the lights running through there. I've never really had to adjust this thing for temperature and all. I'm going to go ahead and put this on here. You can see it's way up here to uh, 70 degrees because I've gone through and, and screwed around with the new motor. So we're going to leave this in here and get the tools out and it will probably cool down in a couple hours. Okay, just for clarity, I end up marking here. I got a new fan motor. Mark the old one, Nold. It's pretty obvious here, but if you get a bunch of stuff you're working on, you throw this in the box, you might think that it's a new motor. So, I'll probably take it apart just to see the type of bearing. Okay, it's been on 3 hours and 25 minutes, 0.28 kilowatt hours. Let's go peek in the freezer here. It's about a minus 12 degrees Fahrenheit. Got a little bit of frozen food in it, so it's cooling pretty well. Blows out of the top. This is the suction side through here. New fan so it's nice and quiet. It's good to have some gauges in here. See what's going on. And it should be more efficient here because it's not sitting here and iced up. Again this unit here is the General Electric uh, Appliance Park Louisville Kentucky GTH 18x that means 18 cubic feet CTZRWW WW usually means white so six and a half amps there new fan motor success heating up some because I'm opening up the uh, the door